My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. Today I want to discuss the church's contribution to autocracy, dictatorships and authoritarian regimes the world over. The postmodern variant of autocracy is a thinly disguised plutocracy or oligarchy buttressed by a populist swell of oclocracy, mob rule. Institutional religion, hierarchical and utopian as it is, is an indispensable ally of such regimes. Evangelicals support Donald Trump. Rabid Islamists spawn psychopathic movements like ISIS and Hamas. The religious right in Israel is Netanyahu's bulwark. And Putin is chums with a nationalistic and obscurantist Pravoslav Church. But nowhere has this collusion been more evident than in the Third Reich. The similarities with the confluence of evangelism and Trumpism nearly a century later are blood-curdling. The so-called German Christians within the new church understood their mission as MGGA, like MAGA but with a G, make Germany great again. And therefore they regarded the Nazis as natural collaborators. Their agenda included the Aryanization of the church by excluding Jewish converts to Christianity. Hitler's agenda of race, blood and soil felt divinely inspired and the Führer was widely perceived to be a messiah, if not sotto voce, the second coming. Prominent theologian Paul Althaus, Althaus argued that race is a divinely ordained order of creation. He welcomed with rapture Hitler's brutal and gory ascendance to power. The German Christians regarded themselves as a new chosen folk and conflated the annals of Germany with the history of salvation. Nazi Christians, Nazi Christians gravitated with ease to the new and virulent form of modern industrial anti-Semitism. After all, the Jews, exiled from their homeland by the Romans, have always been immigrants in the diaspora. Anti-Semitism was not only a racial, but also an anti-immigration and an othering xenophobic movement. Mary Solberg, in her book A Church Undone, has this to say. Most egregious of all, of course, was the church's failure to act on behalf of the Jews. Ideologically, the German Christians outdid the Nazis. They married the rash, racial anti-Semitism of the Nazis to the religious and theological anti-Judaism that had threaded its way through Christian tradition for centuries. In this overwhelmingly Lutheran land, recruiting the German prophet Martin Luther for their purposes was not difficult. His 1543 tract on the Jews and their lives, with its hateful and violent suggestion for how to treat the Jews in 16th century Germany, seemed tailor-made for Nazi purposes in 20th century Germany. Perusing the documents in this volume, it appears that German Christians found it both convenient and compelling to embrace Luther, even to bracket him with Hitler as the two greatest Germans who ever lived. German Christian leader Julius Leuthäuser could write in 1935, Our love for our fellow Germans is the confirmation of our faith in the fact that we are all children of God. No self-respecting Christian would object. But to declare that Jews are no longer fellow Germans, after the Nuremberg Laws were promulgated in 1935, is only a short step away from excluding them in thought, word and deed from the larger circle formed by all of us children of God. Once that happens, all moral and ethical bets are off.